Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today we'll be going over how to laser engrave slate. So I'm going to show you how to take a piece of slate and engrave it and then turn it into this. And unfortunately I've had to do far too many memorials in the last few days. So that's why there's been a slight delay on my videos. So this is actually the first one that I have ever done. I'm pretty proud how the motorcycle and the uh, face turned out on it, but I'm going to show you how to improve upon that. So I took a photo and I used GIMP to edit it, resize it, uh, put it to a 32-bit grayscale, and uh, up the DPI to 300 DPI. So this will be the lettering that I'm putting on it. And this will be the photo. So I've exported them already as PNGs and we're going to open up the file. And this one I did at a lower DPI. This one I did at a higher DPI. So I'm going to pull that one in. So my settings of course are smooth. Now I don't play with the brightness contrast or the white clip until I've inverted the photo. So we're going to do photos with the one bit black and white dithering. I've got it on Jarvis and I'm just going to show you uh, some of the different filters that you can play with. And uh, of course, use what you think looks best. Today, I'm going to actually go with Jarvis. And I just think I get a finer dot with a Jarvis. Now my favorite engraving is diagonal and I'm going to preview it first and showing you three lines. Now, if you had a lower DPI photo, you would up those lines. With a high DPI photo, you lower those lines. So normally if I'm doing normal engraving, I'll go six to seven lines. So there I've inverted the photo. So it's a black and white version. And uh, this is especially used for slate. You have to invert any of your photos because you're actually engraving and it's going to come out white. And you can use this method as well for mirrors and acrylic. So right now I'm playing with the brightness and uh, you'll see many of the um, stippling there disappear or come back again. So I'm just trying to tweak it a little bit for my best possible settings. So here I'm going to crop it because I had some little dots show up on the very bottom that I definitely do not want to show up on the grate. So even though the crop box doesn't really show on top of the photo, it will crop it. And I'm just going to take that to a little bigger so I can definitely see there's uh, no dots hiding around on me. And I'm just going to crop that one more time just in case. And I think that turned out perfect. So once again, just showing you if you invert your photo um, on slate, anything that you see black would be engraved white. So that's why we're inverting it. And I'm going to click on next. Now my engraving speed I'm going to use today is 1800 millimeters per minute with the dynamic power. So remember your constant power is for cutting only. The minimum I'm going to use is 5% and the max is 90%. I'm going to do auto size because I want the photo to be the actual size that I've in, uh, designed it to be at the 300 DPI and I'm not going to the, use the offset for this one. Okay and here it's popped up so we can see my engraving estimated time is 43 minutes and 57 seconds. So I just wanted to open up the file one more time and show you if you had used your regular setting for a 300 DPI photo with the seven lines, what it would exactly look like. Uh, slate is a whole different duck to try to engrave. So you definitely cannot use line to line tracing with grayscale. Uh, it only burns white. You can't burn any whiter. And this is what happens. Uh, we've lost our dots per inch, really, and it's just smoothed it over, which would be fine for grayscale engraving. 
but uh, on slate, all you would get is one big white blob. So now I have tested quite a bit and I'm actually gonna take my quality to four lines per millimeter. And I'm just going to keep all the same settings. And I'm just showing you the photo and invert that. And we're just gonna quickly crop it again here. <clears throat> I'm gonna use all the same exact settings as well in order to engrave my husband's beautiful Aunt Mary who passed. So it'll just take a second here and it should pop up with the original and we're back to one hour and 24 seconds. <clears throat> so I can't stress enough to test, test, test. On the left here, you'll see the three lines per millimeter. On the one on the right here, I even tried the two lines per millimeter and I'm just not getting enough detail. And this is actually grayscale. So this is what I mean, you cannot do grayscale, uh, the line to line tracing um, in grayscale on slate. So this is the four lines and yeah, I'm really happy this with this one. I'm actually going to get a lot of detail in her eyes and her teeth. And uh, of course, it's all depending on the size of the photo that you're going to be doing. And uh, definitely the size of the of what your material is on your DPI. So here I just showed you I'm using a China marker. I actually recommend the Stadler's um, Grease Pencils China Markers from Stadler instead. But uh, I picked up this white one here. Um, it was a, a little bit difficult to get the markings off afterwards. Um, but when I'm all done engraving, I will actually wash this down with soap and water and a soft toothbrush to uh, give it a good scrub. So. Just with a, a little bit of soap and water, the grease pencil will wash right off. So now I'm going to get my slate nice and square into my machine. And I'm going to focus, focus, focus. So you'll tr see me uh, clean off the nozzle there because I had been doing some wood laser engraving. I uh, didn't check my nozzle first. You want to make sure that's clear. That's for your air assist nozzle. So you'll see me uh, using my measurement focusing tool in quite a number of spots. And I'm realizing my slate or my, actually my table, I'm pretty sure has a slight bow to it. Um, so it's not equal throughout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put some little foam pads that I have here, the anti-slip grip pads, and just bring it up enough that everything is level. And I give my machine a nice little workout while it's turned off just to make sure everything's moving smoothly. So I am going to connect my machine and sometimes if you have connection issues make sure you have the proper comm and uh, when you first connect the machine it will tell you the firmware and the uh, Gerbil firmware that you're using. So right now I am just jogging my laser up and over in order to set my origin of where I want this engraving to start. This camera footage is actually of me doing the final test on the bamboo cutting board that you uh, that I previously showed. Um, so this is not the actual footage for engraving on the slate because I did change some things with the slider that I'm definitely going to show you when I'm doing the lettering. So here's my photograph almost fixed finishing up um, it was actual speed and here I am just speeding it up makes my machine look like it's really fast and look I even cleaned my glasses for you guys this time so you can actually <laughs> see it engraving Okay, so this is the footage I need you all to pay close attention to. I go down to my slider tools and I turn the power down to like 10%. Now you don't see that change because your machine needs to be connected. So I'm just going to connect my machine and slide that all the way down. And this is important for when you're framing. Um, if you're finding your laser is making any marks, just do that right away before you go to frame your design. 
And I am going to go with the lettering. I'm going to use line to line tracing. I don't need to use the contrast or anything because I'm going to turn it to black and white and it's on smooth. Diagonal again is my favorite setting to burn and I am going to do that at six lines per millimeter. And I am just going to crop that to the graphic. And there you go. All your points should be within the cropping area. And I'm going to click next. I'm going to use the same exact settings I did for engraving the photo. I'm going to auto size, of course, because I want the lettering the same size as I designed it to. I'm going to use the offset this time. So 15 millimeters, 15 millimeters in 14, 40 millimeters up. Oh, I can't talk today. And then I'm going to click on create. So I don't know if any of you notice the error that I do after I home it, but uh, when I framed it, it was way off. And that's because when I hit the home button, I didn't hit the set origin button. So that's why there's a quick, quick uh, blurp in here of me doing everything all over again, wondering why my offset was wrong. And it was just because I needed to home the machine and set the origin to home if I've got the offset. Okay, so we're back with the file I needed. My, I have homed it. I've set my origin to the home position. And before I frame it, again, I'm going to slide that slider bar down. And you'll see it counting down there. So I'm only at 10% power for my laser at the moment. So I'm going to home that and I'm going to frame it. And I'm just going to speed this portion up of the video because I'm sure that's just the most exciting thing to watch is watching a little red cross go across the screen. But I can't stress enough, frame, frame, frame again, just like you would with your test, just to make sure your artwork is exactly placed on the material where you want it to be. Okay, so I'm happy with my framing and uh, I will home the machine. And uh, then before I go to press the play button, I'm going to go back to my slider tool and I've actually slided, slid it over to two times the power. Now, of course, I'm only using 90% power, so the two times will only multiply that for the amount that your laser is able to do. And so that is the two times that I used on the photograph and the two times on the lettering as well. If you're underpowered, and I'll show you um, later on in the video here, your engraving will actually come out uh, um, kind of like a darker gold coloring. So this is why I did the line to line tracing for the lettering. Um, I actually did this all with the Jarvis setting and I thought the lettering just had too many lines. So that's why I decided to go to line to line tracing with it so it can be crisp and clean. So like I said, you can't frame enough to make sure you're in the exact same position and that your machine is set up well. As you can see now, I don't have my wonky flashlight. I ordered a phone holder to be able to record some videos while I'm painting and then I realized it makes a wonderful air hose holder. And there we go. I'm just gonna wipe off with my hand there, have a look and show you guys a slight close up of how well that engraved. Now there's some grains in the slate itself so that's why you might see some areas but it makes it original. Not all engraving will be the same. So as you can see, it's got a slight yellow tinge to it. But once I uh, spray it with a clear coat and I'm just setting it up on a Lazy Susan with a block, so none of the edges are actually sitting on the edge for the clear coat to you know, possibly go over and then it's stuck to the Lazy Susan afterwards. So yes, I definitely uh, suggest using a respirator. I've got my air exhaust on, I cover anything that I'm not, I do not want to get over spray on. And I'm just using a Proline Power Seal paint. Um, it covers anything. So if you're using any clear coat and stuff like that, uh, double check exactly what you can use on it. So I've got a full can here. I've already shaken it up. Uh, you don't want a partial can that you're having to shake uh, while you're spraying, that you're not getting a good even coat. So again, it's tip down, tip up, tip down, tip up while you're going back and forth. And I'm going to do it in the one direction. And then, aha, Lazy Susan. I just spin it around 
do another coat and of course I've sped it up here. I will spin it around again, go in that direction. Now in case you have anything fall into your paint, don't touch it with your finger. Okay, because then you're really going to leave your mark on it, literally your fingerprint. If you let these clear coats dry, you'll be surprised that once it's dry, you may be able to brush off anything that might have fallen out of it or fallen on it. And uh, if uh, it hasn't, you can actually do a very light sanding with a very fine sandpaper to get any little bits out. And you'll just give it another clear coat. You think, oh, I'm scratching the clear coat. But once you put another clear over it, it's absolutely fine. So like I said, there's some grains in the uh, slate itself that uh, didn't burn. It's not actually indented um, because I had actually tried to engrave this slate before um, and uh, I my test failed. So I actually used um, 80 grit sandpaper, sanded it down and then eventually brought those grits up from 80 to 120 to 220 and then wet sanded with the 220 as well. And uh, it brought the slate up just beautiful. So, of course, you're limited on the detail of what you're trying to do. So, these are actually the slate coasters, they're four inch by four inch. And if you're ever unsure of your focal point of your laser, put a piece of black slate under your laser, focus it and you will be able to see how tiny a dot you can actually get. So here's what I meant before. I was underpowered here, so it hardly even etched into the coaster. Um, and this again is with a 5.5 watt output laser. I am using the LU2-4 20 watt laser, but it's 5.5 watt output. And again, I guess I, I tried to do too much detail in here. So when if I were ever to do this again, I would definitely um, make the black more pronounced in order to do the finer lettering and the details in the feathers. Now I have watched tutorials where individuals will just put go ahead and put clear coat over the slate first and then engrave it. But then you're not engraving in the slate, you're just engraving into the clear coat. It's definitely not recommended because of the toxic chemicals while you're engraving. And your clear coat then, well, if it gets scratched or anything like that, your graphic is ruined. If you go to put a clear coat over something that you've engraved on top of a clear coat, the clear coat fills it in and you totally lose your engraving. So just lower your speed, up your power, and eventually you'll get great results on slate. Now today I get, didn't get a chance to get any footage of my crazy cats, but uh, today's message is before you go create, Make sure you take the time and hug your loved ones today. So I hope you're all well. Take care. Please like and subscribe.